Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year again. I'm going to keep saying it in January. Oh no, I think it's got a cut off point. What was the cut off point for, for you? For me, the 9th. I don't oh. know why it's some The 9th? Oh. That's very specific. I like <laughs> that. Okay, well, we're well past that. Okay. Um, this is Ian Marber. You would have seen him before if you Hello. watch my videos. Um, back by popular demand. That's nice to know. Um, I have seen him numerous times uh, since in the interim. But we didn't film because we were too busy nagging and eating sushi. <laughs> um, Ian, for people who don't know what you are and who you do, and I'm leaning like I'm a newsreader, you're welcome. What do you do and who are you? Uh, I'm a nutrition therapist. I have been qualified and practicing for 20 years now. Um, and I write books and I do some telly and I write for newspapers and magazines and I see clients, which is very exciting. Are you seeing clients again now? That's actually, yes, I am. I am. I mean, I, That's I've, new. Well, I've always seen clients, but what I haven't had is an open clinic, if you like. So um, I've sort of seen personal recommendations. So as of the 9th of January, the 9th of January, I, <laughs> um, I have, um, I'm sorting out a clinic. I'm in the early stages, it's quite difficult to find good rooms. Um, so yep, if anyone would like an appointment, come see me about anything. Well, I'll be signing up because I've been drinking kombucha like it was water and it's as fattening as Coke. It, so no, no, nice. no, not fattening. No, it not fattening, it's full of sugar, it's full of sugar. Yes. But, so um, more of which later. Okay. Um, okay, so nutrition is your is your bag. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know the funny thing about nutrition is that because everyone's an expert now. And, well, there's um, Google, Ian. Doctor Google. Yes. Come on. Is, um, I think it goes beyond that. I mean, ten years ago there was Google. Now there's Instagram. And and as much as it's easy to be disparaging of, of mm. nutrition advice online, it, it's often it's often meant very well. Uh, yeah. And often you little, would hope. You would well, hope. Well, okay. Well, often some facts are right. Um, and so the headline stuff is right, or yeah. often right, or right-ish. But sometimes it's it's slightly changed because the individual maybe doesn't realise they have a bias or an agenda. So, mm. and I think in this day and age on social media, we tend to follow the people that reflect what we already think, as opposed to learning. That other is very true. I have tried over the sort of Christmas break to follow different people on social, and but again, the algorithm, Instagram, just throws up people that you they think you're going to like. Yeah. It also throws up some clangers where you're like, delete, no thank you. Well, on Twitter, actually, I've, started, I've always followed people who um, I don't agree with what they say because otherwise they just go into a little vacuum all of my own where mm. I think I say something, a thousand people go, oh, that's marvellous. <laughs> you know, I think I'm marvellous, <laughs> they think I'm marvellous, and off we go and I don't learn yeah. anything. And it's just, no, it's pointless. I know what you mean. I do end up watching videos on YouTube that give me rage and then I think, well, actually, <laughs> actually from the rage, I'll get five blog posts. Yeah, that's and a good you, you thing. learn something. And also, as much as I'm disparaging about some of the stuff I read online, that that actually it, it, it gives me not content because I'm looking for content, but I understand more about where some of the things come from. Mm. So it does have value. Yeah, okay. You're not just there to have a bargy. No. Occasionally. No, well, every Friday. Oh, well, we haven't done either. Every Friday, Ian mm. runs Nutribollocks. Yes. On Twitter, which is my highlight of my week, I have to say. <laughs> which involves basically the most outlandish claims that you find, and people submit them, don't they? They do, they send them. Um, and it could be anything, but what are your favourites? What won last year? Um, what won last year? We did, actually, last August we did the best of the best. And I think <laughs> I remember it was that. the worst of the worst. Um, it was a competition between Kim Kardashian and her lollipops. Oh, the lollipops? The, the appetite yeah. suppressant lollipops. Yeah. And there was something else. Whatever it was didn't win because. Because Kim Kardashian won. Stormed it. Um, <laughs> well but, done, Kim. Well, you must be very proud. <laughs> um, but what's interesting actually is I this I just did the first one last Friday. I have not done one since before Christmas, um, and we had double the amount of votes. Normally, you know, I don't. We had double the amount of votes one would expect yeah. for not particularly strong candidates. Yeah. So people um, are now engaging a bit. More. I hope so. Yeah. I had hope. a couple of people saying, "Oh, this is getting really boring." And I was like, "Well, then don't, don't do it." Don't buy it then. But it's not boring for half the people who haven't yeah. even seen Ooh, it before. Oh, actually, it was in Grazia last week. I haven't seen it. The week before last, oh, in Grazia, really? they did a uh, "What's Up" and "What's Down." One of those. I'd love to see it. If someone has it. Um, where they apparently did sort of what's what's interesting, and what's hot, and it was Nutribollocks. Nutribollocks. There you go. In it. this in this instance, uh, calling something bollocks is meant the way that we usually mean it being British. Whereas yes. when you say the dog's bollocks, which is what I use a lot, completely different. That means it's marvellous. That means it's marvellous. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, Whereas that glass of water is the dog's bollocks. Yes. I mean, there is another phrase for it, which is nutri babble. Right. But I like bollocks. The, no. have the, you know, the We're British. We demand bollocks. <laughs> Okay, so what we thought we would do is, because we could talk for hours, like with Sam Farmer before you, who yes. I've just filmed with, 
um, I thought it'd be good as it's New Year to, to cherry pick some trendy buzzwords, trendy mm -hmm. things, just to get your genuine reaction, sir. Go on then. Okay, so first up is intermittent fasting. Um, I think it's very good. I think it, wor it works. Um, it works for several reasons. Okay, what is it first of all? Um, intermittent fasting, fasting is uh, uh, only eating for a set amount of time. In my case, it's 18 hours a day. But, um, uh, <laughs> Christmas time but, is about 21 hours a day. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, it's some people, for instance, do what's called a 16-8, where they only yep. eat for eight hours a day, let's say midday to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and it has many benefits, most of which, not all, come from the fact that you're eating less. Mm -hmm. um, so which people forget. I've, and I've heard it tied into things like it lowers your inflammation levels it's and things like that, which it must do because you have that whole 18 hour... Well, you, you've, got, you've got the what's called the inflammatory cascade. Yeah. And of course, a lot of that will respond to, not always, but part one of the triggers is what you've eaten. Yeah. So if you don't eat for yeah. extended periods of time, and this is something that happens with a lot of diets. People say, I did this plan, I've lost the weight, my blood pressure's come down, yeah. anxiety, I sleep better, all of which are marvellous. But they're not unique to that diet. No, it's they're unique actually to the, the actual to the weight process weight. of the weight loss. Exactly. So a lot of the, the benefits from intermittent fasting is from the fact that you're losing weight. Yeah. Also, it, it doesn't suit everybody. Yeah. A lot of people uh, get extremely hungry. And yeah. that kind of fits in sometimes with this idea that we need to be punished for having overeaten. So, uh, oh, I don't think No, that. a lot of people yeah. do like I that know. sort of, you know, well, pear shirts. No, let's face it, there's nothing, pear shirts, <laughs> there's nothing as tied in with guilt as food. And Christmas. Well, what, you no, just in general. Yes. Food in general. Food and, and parenting, I think, bring, especially for young mums, like, in terms of what I see online, yes. guilt. There's a lot of guilt by association. Oh, I've gone back to work. Oh, I haven't gone back to work. Oh, I'm providing for my family. I'm not providing. Like... That is a lot of guilt, but food, well, with women, yes. Well. But I also think it takes a lot of um, toll on men and young boys that we just don't talk about. It's all as if it's just girls who have a food issue. Well, I, I think um, uh, we are talking about it more, yeah. but what's interesting is that for men in general are not as good at looking after themselves. And I think that men... That is true. Although um, we have... <laughs> I'm watching you. Although um, uh, I actually think that men have fewer resources. Um, yeah. and, and it's partly because women are better at looking after themselves, have more they interest have to be, in health, I think. and they also are often become the uh, uh, providers of health and information for their families and people around them. Do you know, them. I used to think that was a load of nutri bollocks, but huh. it's so true. It absolutely is true. It's so true, and I don't, you know, I'm not, you know, if you all know me well, I'm not into the whole dividing of the sexes and we're all equal, but there is a certain element of our family that involves me going, don't eat that. Really? And it's not... Listen? No. Actually, if you were my mum, I just... Not to my mum. Not to my kids. Okay. To my husband. Right. But then he'll say th similar things to me, and he'll go, well, you're eating it. And I'm like, yeah, but... Yeah, but I know so what I'm doing. So it starts, I know I'm eating it. You're just eating. <laughs> but but and, and that, that's actually a very, very valid point. And I think that, um, I mean, I'm not selling a book, but I've got a book coming out later on this year directed at men. Simply oh, okay, because good. men of my age, you know, 45 and upwards, and I'm definitely 45 yeah. and upwards, Amen. are notoriously bad at looking after themselves. Yeah. And also uh, tend to not eat very well. And when they do, they, they attack a diet with gusto, yep. stick to it, yep. lose the weight. And then suddenly they're on this diet cycle um, where they gain weight and lose weight. And it's not about weight. It's about inflammation, prostate, all the yeah, things Yeah, I think if you, I think, I do think the industry as a whole, the food industry, the beauty industry, they lose out making it about weight in terms of if you said to a woman, do you know there's a whole thing in the, in the US with cigarette packets, right? So let me come to, don't let me forget okay. to come back right. to weight and inflammation. But when they were when they were deciding what pictures to put on the cigarette packets yeah. and the warnings. Well dead people wasn't enough. No, it's seriously not enough. Really? So a charred lung did not have as much effect as a box that said, warning, this could age you by twenty five years. Really? Oh well, actually it doesn't surprise me. Because we're quite vain. Well So inflammation, if if in a skincare world, which they should do, and I you know, there are a few of us who try and say well, actually, if your skin's inflamed, that would sensitise it. Doesn't mean you've got a sensitive skin, which is a whole other conversation. Yes. But if we went, if we were talking about nutrition and food, and we went down the line of, you know, if you are doing intermittent fasting, it will by default bring down the levels of inflammation in your gut yes. throughout your system for a certain amount of time that may not have been there before. Maybe that would be a way of making it less about guilt, attaching it to food and issues from when you're growing up and everything, and just about 
your general health now? Well, um, interesting, there's a really, really good book by Laura Thomas that's just come out. I saw it's just, just come out. Just Eat It. Just Eat It. Um, and it's about uh, um, you know, getting back in touch with intuitive eating, understanding where your feelings and your guilt and yeah. a lot of your, your default response yeah. to food is. And, and interesting enough, I mean, you did one earlier that I, I mustn't have this because it's fat. Yeah. Um, but see, that's my stupid language no, to no, myself. Well, no, no, but it's tied into my use, absolutely. But what i'm what i that what that means to me is i know that i've been craving sugar more in the last few months in the last couple of months yeah and i know it's because i've had it coming into my diet without realizing how where it was coming well, from that much i think also that, that from, from a simple biochemical perspective that when you have sugar then your glucose level if you're having it in a drink i yeah. free sugars yeah. you're not having it with foods so yeah. it has a, a, a an unrestricted oh mate that's hindrance. done now it's so done when your glucose levels rise and then they <laughs> fall all of which is perfectly normal and some people respond to a low in glucose by craving sugar. Yeah, well, that's done now, so thanks for that. Sorry, really, now, haven't I? Yeah, no, I'm glad. Okay. Thank you. Good. It's all good. Um, now I want you to tell me that coming on from that ketone diet. Oh, keto. Um, keto is really interesting. But let's just, just go yeah, back. Intermittent fasting, you agree with. I think it's a very good thing. It suits some people who like a rigid framework. Is there anyone who should not do it? Um, diabetics? I think if you, diabetic, <laughs> certainly not. Um, not good for Mr. Hirons. Any illness at all check with your doctor, yeah. it won't suit well, you at all. But um, I, I think the other thing is if you if you are, uh, it may not be good for people with anxiety, simply because you, you may have an adrenal response, they're not having much food. You know how you get a second wind sometimes? Yeah. Like, this is your adrenal glands okay. kicking in to produce okay. adrenaline when you're stressed. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's, it, it won't suit everybody. Of course, I don't like everything. Think, yeah, and I, you know, I just worry a little bit about, um, uh, when we don't eat, if you do intermittent fasting or you do a strict diet plan, when we don't eat and we feel terrible, mm. I think going back to what you were saying about guilt, I think mm. I, some people will feel I deserve it. Right. I should feel terrible. No, that's effed up. And no, I, 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 yeah. it's, it's unpleasant. Yeah. It's but I think nice. that it's no an example should. of how food is used to reward us and also punish as us. As a weapon. Well. Yeah. As a weapon, good or bad. Okay. Ketones. Ketone. Um, ketone. Ketone diet has been around for an awful long time mm. uh, and it is. Effectively, uh, unlike Atkins and a high protein diet, which is high protein, l medium fat, and low carbohydrates, mm -hmm. this is high fat, medium protein. Mm -hmm. um, and the theory is that effectively you burn up, you use up the existing glucose, the circulating glucose that's created from the food you eat, um, and then or what will your happen? Uh, or your kombucha, in your case. <laughs> and then what will happen is that you switch fuel tanks. This is the simplest way of describing it. Yeah. So, um, what are you know those? Uh, Ubers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, there's a Toyota Prius. The Prius. Right? Okay, so you've got two engines. You've got the electric engine, you've got the petrol engine. Mm -hmm. And the, the, I always think a convenient way of thinking about this is that you're, you've run out of petrol, now you're running on the electric engine. Yeah. And in doing so... What's the reality? You have to... Well, it, it actually works that way. When, when it comes to ketogenic diets, you're burning fat, which are burnt, to produce energy. So okay. this is your secondary source, effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you run on uh, fat, you lose weight, and because fat is very satisfying, uh, you actually eat less generally. So if you look at the diet plan and you added up the calories per meal, you, some people might go, I'm not having smoked salmon and, and cream cheese mm. and Brazil nuts for breakfast, um, because that's you know 1,200 calories. But the truth is that actually you're not hungry for a prolonged period afterwards. Mm -hmm. So um, And they're good things to eat. They're good things to eat, yes. The, you know, on paper, the keto plan is very good that it says have a lot of fiber. I find that a lot of people who do it just have the fat and the protein. They right. don't really have the they're, vegetables they're so, so much. We have totally bastardized and ostracized carbs, haven't we, as a, as a complete, well, as a society. It's almost like carbs well, are just the C word now. I think um, the, uh, the demonizing sugar, as we have done, has, has certainly... Uh, made more of that. Um, and I think also, you know, the ketone diet by the ketogenic diet has validity. Um, I don't think it's useful, should be done in the long term. And I, there's a lot of talk about um, uh, saturated fats and linked with heart disease. Yeah. And I think that has been certainly overstated in the past, but we can't rule it out. Mm. Um, and so, you know, it's not something I would do lightly and I would only do it for the short term. And um, I mean, I tried it and I lost weight, but you know, after 10 days of having a high fat diet, I would have sold my mother for an apple. But so you can't have an apple on it? Well, you can, but it, my point is that the people okay. tend to go hardcore. You know, hardcore. Right. Because it's easier. 
it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, it's easy if you commit, like you yeah. just committed. Well, also, it, it's a diet that actually creates a lot of passion on people, and people yeah. supports can be very vociferous. I just filmed something for a BBC show about ketogenic plans, and we had various people come along to talk to about the plan, and I've never heard such passion. I've never really? heard such... Um, Devotion. And it's Almost. working for them and are they healthy? Do cult. they have like healthy? Yeah, slightly like cult like. Yes, they do. They do indeed. Um, what was interesting in talking to the various people, they said uh, it, it's just become like any other diet. I do it and I fall off the wagon and then I do it again. Right. Well, Which is actually, what everyone does all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So even a diet that's satisfying and, and yeah. fulfilling is a, a high fat diet. Eventually you're just going to want that apple. I, I wonder, yes. Or a okay, so diet. intermittent fasting, ketones. Now, the word detox, which yes. I've just had a lovely conversation with Sam Farmer about. Um, it involved a lot of, it literally was doing this. Oh. Um, you would like to see a positive spin on the word detox well, because of what it could potentially do to your behaviour patterns. Exactly. Now, I've been a bit... I like the way my comfy yeah, listening. No, I've been <laughs> dismissive about, about, excuse me, about detox in the past, simply because, and you'll, everyone was seen on Twitter and, and Instagram. And so have I, but in our defence, we're being defensive about when it's used as a marketing Complete. tool. Well, yeah. you'll have seen, you know, if you've got lungs, you've got liver, you've got kidneys, kidneys well, you're detoxing. And yeah. the truth is, though, that you're detoxing, I'm detoxing right now. If you do a gentle plan, you know, I don't care if they call it a cleanse or a detox, one that doesn't in include, uh, doesn't involve starving yourself as in juices all day long, then actually it mm -hmm. can put a full stop new paragraph after pa past behaviour. And if you use yeah. it to change some of your habits, not to go hardcore, not to go on a very low calorie diet, yeah. but if you use it in a way sensibly, yeah. then actually it can be quite useful. And I, so I support it from that perspective. Yeah. When it's used for marketing, when you own it for juices. yourself, but when it's used by marketing companies, no. Yeah. I've got to say, there's a, you know, Bill Hicks, the comedian, the American comedian yes. who died. He did a whole sketch on if you work in marketing. Really? It's, Was it about? It's they include very details? not safe for work. Um, <laughs> but I, I won't link it, but you can Google it. But he's not a fan of marketing departments, is the best way of putting it. And every point he makes is spot on. And I do worry that all my marketing friends will be like, we, it's just a job, Caroline. We have to have a job, but you can do it well, and you can do it with guilt and fear mongering, and that's where we tend to go. Oh, don't worry about that, or this isn't a big deal, or da 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 da. Well, da. I, I did. I, that's an interesting point because there were lots of the questions on your feed and my mm -hmm. feed as well, which wanted something very definitive. Yeah. Yes or no? Which brand? Yeah. How often? And I think there's something quite useful in a detox plan when it's hair shirt and and used for marketing because it kind of feeds in to this yeah. whole. Pressure, it's also media. it's tell me it's tell me that I'm doing everything wrong and fix me. Fix me. Fix well, also, me. If I'm doing it wrong, excuse you. <laughs> if I'm doing it wrong and I now go on a plan that does it right, I'm going to feel terrific. Yeah. And it's just you know you're going to feel better hopefully temporarily. But and you have to keep but, it up. But, but eventually a lot of these things become just another diet. Yeah. I remember when I was losing the weight and I said to you, okay, I don't know if this plan works, I just want you to give me your honest to God opinion, what do you think? And you said, my darling, you are losing weight because you are eating less and you are on a diet and you are sticking to it. And that was what you said and I was like, okay, did I, say I get my it. Darling? You did, you called really? me my darling. Oh, I'm nice. Maybe you are being sarcastic, but I think no, you no, meant it. it. No, I like to think you meant okay. it. But it, it's true <laughs> and it doesn't matter, I'm saying it, it doesn't matter which plan you do as long as you're meeting your nutritional needs. Yeah, of course. But if it works for you, um, you know, it's got to work for you Practically, yeah. It, price wise, there's no point in having a food plan that oh is so God. expensive that you can only keep it up temporarily. Yeah, that's the um, big thing at the moment with all these diets that are coming over. You know, and I don't want to bring her up again, but Gwyneth advocates this uh, certain lifestyle, and it's so expensive and so out of reach for anyone who can't afford a nanny, a housekeeper, a chef, an accountant, or a, a jade egg. Or a jade um, egg. I think the other thing to remember, the other P, I think about is pleasure. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's no point. You're going to eat hopefully every day for the rest mm -hmm. of your life, several times. They're a called day. taste buds for a reason. Lucky, lucky us. Mm -hmm. And to do it in this miserable, guilt-ridden, pleasureless Horrible. way is so there's just no way to live your life. No. Okay. So we'll do that bit there. Okay. Speaking of no way to live your life, talk to me about celery. Celery. <laughs> now. So if you're not aware, there is this whole. Um, I might. I think I'll just. Is it? What's he called? The medical media. He's, he claims that he started it. Um, there's a chap on Instagram, I'm sure he's elsewhere as well, called The Medical Medium. The Medical Medium. And he advocates basically you just shred a lot of celery and drink celery juice from yeah. what I can see. And in fact, if you look at his Instagram feed, 
um, you will see that celery juice features very heavily. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's even one video on how to make celery juice in case you weren't sure. Um, and Ooh, no, 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 is there anything I, other than just blending it? I didn't watch it. So <laughs> oh, fair enough. I, I, okay. I vainly, arrogantly thought, well, I think I probably know that. I think you probably know yeah. that by now. But so why, what, what, okay, I have so many questions. Why? why would that be a thing? Where did it come from? Okay. Is there any science? I highly doubt, but if, is there any science and just, yeah. Well, what? There, there's, there's nothing unique about celery. Okay, good. So um, a lot of the, the benefits that are touted on this particular feed uh, are for having well, any vegetable. Um, but of okay. course, if you put any juice, any vegetable through a juicer, you remove the fibre, and the fibre is really important, and then you've just got I the mean, juice. celery is pretty much water at this point anyway, it compared is. to a lot of good veg. It is. And I think, um, I do think that celery is perhaps one of the least popular vegetables for a good reason. You know, yeah. It doesn't taste like an awful It's good lot, for dipping in a blue cheese and... sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After yes. a chicken wing. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's why the good Lord created it. But um, I, I do think, I'm not... The, with Nutribolics, by the way, that yeah. um, some Instagrammers have been nominated oh, yeah. a disproportionate amount of time, including... Oh, is, is he up there on the top ten? He has, top yes. Three. But there's, there's I, I don't know about that, but there's certainly some unusual and, and dramatic claims. Okay, so there's nothing exciting to be had from drinking celery juice. No, nothing except over a lot any of leftover juice. celery pulping up your machine. Yeah, and it's the fibre you need. Yeah, so, so blending so it takes all the fibre away. The point I mean, you wouldn't have anything that's half chewed. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. have the vegetable. Have the vegetable. Just have the vegetable. Maybe yes. not with the blue cheese dressing and the chicken wings. Sometimes, but, you know. yeah. Collagen supplements. Collagen supplements are very interesting because they the, the big sell is that, of course, the collagen levels start to reduce from the age of 28, 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Collagen is important for maintaining the skin matrix, as you know, and therefore taking collagen will make our skin better. Now I've seen some studies that say it does, mm -hmm. but I've looked at the source and they're sponsored by oh, the way. Well, you know, you, you like to think that whoever did the research isn't, you know, going, go on, give me an extra 15, I'll mm -hmm. say it's even better. I mean, it, it, it can't be that basic. But, um, it, imagine this, okay, you decide, uh, you're redecorating your, your second bedroom mm -hmm. and you decide you go to the store and there's you buy the lamp for there and you buy the, the photo frame for there and you buy the cushion for the bed etc mm -hmm. you know where they're going when you eat something your stomach doesn't go ah oh, doesn't do the same thing it doesn't know you specifically meant it for that shelf or the bed <laughs> it yeah. doesn't say you're having protein because of course when it's broken down it's just broken down into mm -hmm. its constituent parts i'll definitely pop it to your skin so, um, <laughs> when you, you say it like that, it just makes me laugh because it oh. seems so bloody obvious. Well, you know, in I'll truth, just pop it to your skin. If you is that what you want? <laughs> just let me know. Um, the truth is, though, that if you wanted um, collagen, then you could have bone broth or you could have jelly, sugar free jelly. Mm. Why sugar not? That's got jelly. collagen in it. But, but, what, in, bovine jelly, like gelatine jelly. Yeah, Hartley's sugar free. I love it. Do you? Yeah, I do. It's, it's protein. How's no it sugar, eating? but it's made from an aminal. So oh, okay, yeah, got yeah. it. Okay. No, mm. it is. Um, yes, it is. It is gelatin, and it's, mm. some people won't like it at all. I'm just saying that if you want it, you don't need to spend money on supplements. No, just eat um, jelly. You, you, uh, I have read papers, and I have. Uh, there's a couple of people I follow who I know actually, a couple of beauty writers who say, look, it really works. Uh, individually, I'm sure it works for them, but the, the research just isn't there. The However, science. vitamin C. It's very important part of collagen and so you do need vitamin c in your diet and vitamin c you need 80 milligrams a day that's the rda recommended okay. daily or the rni um and that's easy to get uh, if you have a, a a spear of broccoli you'll get 30 milligrams mm -hmm. if you get if you have a, a red pepper chopped up into your salad or or stuffed with mints or, or chicken wings whatever you want you're going to get <laughs> not that bad 90 or 100 so it's easy to get your vitamin c okay. and you need vitamin c every day we don't store it and if you have enough fruit and vegetables you will get enough vitamin c so you don't necessarily need a supplement that doesn't mean the supplement doesn't have uses yeah hmm. okay the link between b vitamins and acne was hmm. a recurring question i saw that you know some people get b some people will get bad skin from various things. There's no definite link saying if you have B12 in supplement form, you will definitely get acne. Yeah. Some people will, 
Um, I think one of the questions was what's the best way to take B12? And yeah. the answer is any way you want. Um, I, uh, being older and digestive capabilities reduce as you get older. Um, that, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. I'm going to make a note. All right. um, some people, I, I have a, a patch, um, a B12 for what? patch. Do you? Not you know, once a week, I just put my B12 patch on and then you How long it stays for? on for 24 hours and you take it off. And does it work? I'm alive. What's <laughs> so, say? Um, yeah. It does work, oh. um, and, and that may be a way to um, not get acne, effectively. If it's if it's something to do with the digestive system, See, mine I was, don't know. I, I, could, I used to work for David Kirsch, yeah. right? I didn't work for him, I was a consultant for him in the UK, and yeah. so I would have access to all his product, which was great. And he made a B12 spray mm -hmm. for, predominantly it was used obviously by sports people, but also by girls under their tongue at a certain time of the month. Yeah. And I wouldn't be the, I, you know, I never did any testing, I used to use it, but all I can tell you is the tester was always empty in Space NK, especially if there was a high ratio of women working there, because they'd go, my period's due, <laughs> literally. Really? And so it was a great seller and we loved it. Now, I didn't have a problem with that, but his mul there was a multivitamin B at some point that would give me the biggest zits really? a couple of days after taking it. And the only thing I, you know, generally I would be able to correlate where that would come from. You know, normally I'm quite yeah. good at going, oh, that's because you had that, that's because mm. you had that. And I tried it a few times, and I cannot take a B vitamin. My skin does not like it, but I can B, take B12. B, like a B complex? Or yeah, B complex. Really? I can't do it. Really? Also, the smell makes me gag. That's another yeah, thing. You can smell. <laughs> it, it, there, there's two points there. The first yeah. is that we love the idea that we take something and it works straight away. In yeah. fact, one of the questions was, how long does it take? Um, I can't remember who asked that. How long does it take for a diet to work? And I think they had more <laughs> of a food plan yeah. as opposed to a weight loss plan. Yeah. Um, you know, and we understand if you've got a headache and you take a, a paracetamol, the headache will go within an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. Diet is slower. Yeah. But also it's cumulative. And yeah. it's not so obvious. Something I've gathered today. Um, well, <laughs> it's, it's not so obvious because the manifestations of a bad diet, um, in your case, I'm not saying you have a bad diet, but you know, in other words, you it know that you had a B6. And it's interesting that you can pin it down like that. Um, you know, we, we understand the bad manifestations, but when yeah. it comes to actually it's working, whatever that means for the individual, yeah. it's difficult to pin down. And so what I often say to clients is that uh, keep a score, and it's worth doing, um, write down your five symptoms, okay? Uh, could be lifestyle, could be I'm always tired, um, I'm always bloated, just examples, whatever they could be, I don't sleep well, and then score them, one to ten, okay? Zero being, well, one rather being never get this, Actually, why would you have it then? But anyway, and 10, I get it all the time. And then don't look at it again for two weeks. Fill in the same form instinctively. Don't linger over too much. And then look at your total score. And that's how you know. And that's a very useful way of actually assessing if the changes you've made have worked. It, have worked. Really worthwhile doing. Okay. Um, we had a disproportionate amount of questions. Um, and again, it's not that it's trendy, I think it's just that it's more known now. Yes. Um, and I just wanted you to say what your advice would be to people asking the question, because I know you don't want to go there in terms of specific nutritional advice, but things like perimenopause and PCOS. Yeah, well PCOS I can happily talk about. Okay. Perimenopause, um, I, you know, I know the headline stuff, but it's a big topic and I would suggest... And you suggest had some different speciality people you could recommend? Well, there's one actually for endometriosis, yeah. um, which I, you know, I know the headline stuff, I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Um, there's a book from 2002, still mm -hmm. very valid, um, by Diane, without an E, Shepperton Mills, three words. Um, and I think that's a really good guide to dealing with endometriosis through nutrition. Okay. So very much worth looking at. Okay. Um, PCOS? PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, mm -hmm. is, has a connection to insulin. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, having high levels of insulin can exacerbate PCOS. Yeah. So if you have PCOS, you need to look at a low insulin plan, in other words, an Atkins type plan, yeah. not necessarily keto, too much fat. Yeah. But what you might want to do is go on, make sure that you have protein with carbohydrates, that's protein and carbs, that's with um, some fiber, so complex carbs, fiber rich carbs, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. The reason for doing this is you keep your glucose levels fairly even and you don't trigger excess in insulin that's a kind of lazy way of, yeah it's kind of a you know it's a very broad term way of pushing it and that should help alleviate some of the symptoms so that's much better than kind of taking a supplement yeah pop a pill here and da da da, da. yeah exactly um general 
bloatedness stroke IBS. Is there anything in your experience that you mm. think you could look at someone, if you were doing a meal plan for them, yeah. you could kind of go, mm, that, that is potentially where your problem is coming from, or is everybody, as in body, not everyone, everybody yeah. so individual that anything can make anyone bloated and it's a game? Well, we're, we're individual, but we're not 100% you know, different. So mm. um, uh, let, let's separate them out. There's bloating and IBS. IBS mm -hmm. is an umbrella term. With IBS being an umbrella term, it's sometimes quite difficult to get to the, the bottom core, of it. The bottom of it. Da -dum, boom. Boom. Um, so uh, I suggest working with a specialist. Um, if your doctor will refer you to see a gastroenterologist, fantastic. Maybe your doctor will refer somebody to see a dietitian. You can come and see someone like me. Um, things to do at home, try a probiotic. Certainly. Okay, come some back to people, Okay, some people benefit from taking a digestive enzyme. Now, a digestive enzyme replaces enzymes in your stomach that help break down food. Mm -hmm. um, as we get older, we potentially have fewer of them. Uh, not you know, dramatically, yes, yeah. but we have fewer of them. You can get two types of digestive enzymes. One type has hydrochloric acid, that's HCL, very important, mm -hmm. HCL. If you're going to take one that has HCL in it, which is particularly useful for digesting protein, don't, it's not a regular supplement, take it with the food, only ever with the food. Okay. Don't take it an hour later or an hour before home because it will cause pain and it, it's acid. Um, okay. And there are ones that don't contain hydrochloric acid. And what would be the acids, difference between both? Um, that they have exactly the same enzymes. One has hydrochloric acid, one doesn't. Um, I Is there find, a benefit? Um, I find the HCL ones are quite good for people who have a high protein diet. Good to know. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, some people don't want to take the HCL simply because uh, it's usually bovine sourced, so not for vegans and vegetarians. Good to know. Um, Look at probiotics. Okay, talk important. to me about probiotics. Probiotics, as you know, good bacteria. They're mm. found in many foods, kombucha. Um, I won't be having that yet. <laughs> Uh, sauerkraut, miso soup. Yeah, but I can't do. I like miso soup, but yep. I can't do sauerkraut. No, fair enough. Um, obviously, you can get capsules as well. And yeah, there I is take a capsules. little bit of a controversy about how effective they are. I think they are effective. I think they're effective, but I can only go well, on when I, you know. Of course, and I would say um, if you are taking it for a specific reason, certainly take one a day. But I think as general maintenance after your bloating has passed, one every second or third day, if. That's your condition. Really? Yeah, you don't need to take it every day. Why? Um, you, once they're full, they're full. And of course, you, you could argue that people that make probiotics are going to say, of course, well, of you, course you should take it every day. Yes, uh, and I, I just, let's if, say somebody comes to me with bloating and we try probiotics and they have success, I'll say, right, just take one every third or fourth day. Interesting. Now, prebiotics okay, are prebiotics. quite different. Yeah. Prebiotics are uh, foods that effectively feed, they provide fuel for the good bacteria. Okay. Prebiotics. By the way, I'm making notes so that I have all the answers to when you ask me questions, by the way. Okay, we, um, <laughs> prebiotics are found in many foods, mm -hmm. celery, chicory. Um, it's also found in Jerusalem artichokes. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing about prebiotics is that you don't have too many because you will get a lot more bloated and there'll be a lot of discomfort. I once had a second bowl of Jerusalem artichoke soup and I remember regretting it for days. Oh. It can, you know, it's uncomfortable. Um, so prebiotics and probiotics are quite different. If you yeah. have IBS and you have bloating and discomfort, which is could be part of it, I would say stay away from prebiotics. And just have pro. Yeah. Absolutely. Talk to me about, I've got a few three things to wrap up on. Okay. Talk to me about dairy. Um, dairy is very interesting because it is an, a ubiquitous, affordable and convenient source of calcium. Mm -hmm. contains protein as well. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with dairy. It okay. doesn't suit everybody. And yep. people who don't want to have dairy for whatever reason can replace it with oat milk or soy milk or soy products. And there's nothing wrong with any of those. But uh, it, it, there's an interesting link here to your kombucha, bear in mind, mm -hmm. is that you have the kombucha because it has good bacteria, etc. And because there was a headline there that attracted your attention, you overlook the fact that it contains five, a lot of sugar. Five grams per sugar per, per hundred milliliters. Mm -hmm. So the average bottle would have almost your full day's sugar intake. Um, and the same is true of oat milk or soy milk. Sometimes we look because we're looking for non-dairy. That's our guiding that's light, effectively. See. And we don't look at the fact that there are added sugars, um, mm -hmm. and, and that may no, nothing wrong with it. May not be what you want. So yeah. check labels. Check labels. 
talk to me about the correlation between these two and actually the importance of one and how you help the other. Cholesterol and fibre. Um, cholesterol. Cholesterol is made in-house in the liver. Uh, it very, very little comes from food. Mm -hmm. um, and cholesterol is, the excess is excreted into your bathroom through fibre. <laughs> Um, yep. And so fibre is really, really important, and it's always important in so many different things. On average, we get 18 grams a day, we need 30. Right. So... Um, uh, and best source of fibre? Best fruit, vegetables, grains, legumes. Legumes? Legumes. I mean, if you look at a, a, a portion of, I don't know, butter beans, they'll have... I say butter, then I got all excited. Four or five grams of fibre. Then if you look at a, a, some broccoli, that'll have three or four. So build up through the day. Mm -hmm. And fruit and vegetables are really important. And another reason not to have juices, only one a day if you have to, mm. because they've had the fibre removed. Yeah. And you actually, if there's one thing that people do that would Stop make the biggest it. difference... No, no, not that. It's get more fibre. Mm. And, and it's such a boring over. How much fibre in apples? Ish. Probably four or five, if that, two okay. or three. And one oak cake, no, one oak cake is one gram, I remember that. Mm. One gram of fibre. So um, 30 oak cakes a day will be fine. <laughs> so it just gets you, you might be a bit bloated. <laughs> but, but it is, it, 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 what's interesting is that we're always looking for something new, something cutting edge, something yeah. that will change everything. And the basics don't change. And mm -hmm. fibre is one of those boring... I don't think anyone wants to come and see me and, and pay good money and me say, have more fibre. But sometimes it's true. You just need to eat more fibre. You just thank you very much. That'll be a thousand pounds. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a thousand pounds. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't think we've even got the tip of the no. iceberg. We never do. But uh, you should come back because what I'll do is we'll try and condense some of the questions you know the uh, some of the questions from this down and maybe we can kind of just keep going in a I'm very happy to one one thing if I yeah may. if you want a consultation I'm not selling them um, on my website I haven't done it yet um, there'll be an email don't phone me because the phone number there is not for clinic so email first please oh interesting there you go um, thank you thank you very much for asking and then me. come back when your book's out I'm interested in yes. that especially if it's for boys men man food Man, is that what it's food. called? Yes. Man food, like man flu. Yeah. Or just man food. No, but it's real this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, thank you. Thank I you will put much. all of Ian's thank you. bits and pieces below, and I'll sort of headline the things we're going to talk about. Uh, thanks very much. We will see you soon. We'll be back. We will be back. After this break. <laughs> <laughs>